Institute Space Toronto. So I actually wanted to applaud you guys because uh, this is really exciting for us. This is our first event, and Matt's really excited. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for coming to our stream and showing up. Uh oh, oh, okay. Um, just a quick bit of uh, background on YouTube Space Toronto. This is the ninth YouTube Space uh, that is open around the world. We are the newest. We just opened in April. Uh, we're getting creators in here. We're actually booked up until September. So if you are a creator with 10,000 and above subscribers, uh, we do have an event at the end of August called Unlock the Space, which we'd love for you guys to come to. If you're at 1,000 subscribers and above, you can come to our happy hour events, which are just kind of a social gathering to get together. And then uh, in the fall, we're going to have a whole bunch of amazing programs to help with channel creation, uh, channel guidance, and everything to help you become an amazing YouTuber. And speaking of amazing YouTubers, Matt now is almost at five, well, actually just past five million subscribers. <laughs> Massive number. I, I honestly think that's like the number one YouTuber, uh, it, Canadian YouTuber, still in Canada. So it's actually extremely exciting uh, to have him here in the space. Uh, I, before we go, just uh, wanted to thank everybody for, for coming and for uh, for attending and for you know helping out in the great setup that we have here. Um, but I'm not going to talk about the book, but we do have uh, Justin Stoller who is going to talk about. It. What I will say also is that it's a it's a bestseller. So this morning we were just talking about that. I checked Amazon like an hour ago, and Matt's book is actually a bestseller on Amazon. So, Woo! Woo! so we'll have a little Q and a, uh, a Q and A with Justin and Matt, uh, and then you guys will have a chance. We'll run around and like have a chance to answer questions. And uh, this is pretty massive. Nice. Five million subscribers. There you go. Please uh, welcome Justin from Penguin. So thank you. This is, as you all know, we're celebrating Matthew's first ever published book. And it's really just the next step in this fantastic YouTube journey that started six years ago, when you first started posting videos online. These were fun, energetic flashes of things that interested him, things that made us laugh. And today he still has the same sense of wonder and curiosity that just really considering everything he does from his Top 10 list, his class packs under five minutes, his gaming channel, his blog, and his really popular series, the 50 million facts to blow your mind, which is really the spirit behind uh, the spirit behind the book. Very quickly, Matthew established this unique voice online and this fun natural style that really connected with people. And as Mark mentioned, it is an absolute ton of people. We have five and a half million subscribers now, I think, and over 700 million views in total, it's absolutely fantastic. And just like all of Max fans, the, the book is truly global. It's been published, of course, in Canada, but also in the US, the United Kingdom. It's been published in Germany, in Poland, and in China, and it's available everywhere else, too. So this is a really huge global event. We're out to go for Matt, and we're just very excited to get this kicked off. <laughs> Later this week, so we're starting tonight, Matt's going to be traveling to New York, I think Texas, and then also London. He's got a lot of good stuff lined up, but it's only fitting that we start everything here, and Matt's home. So, uh, here he is. YouTube Sensation, and now, as of today, published author, Matt Simpson. <laughs>
but anyway, after we will move back and forth, we're going to open it up to questions right over here. And uh, we got a mic to pass around to get those questions after, so it's going to be great. Yeah. So just to start off, um, <laughs> I'll just start by saying I had a great time working with you. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. And, and seeing all this amazing stuff you came up with. Uh, so my first question is a real simple one. What do you probably get all the time? Where do you find all your material and how do you even come up with so many different ideas and topics for teams for your videos? Yeah, is this the same list of questions you sent to all the radio stations? Because that was the first one I asked. It is. <laughs> well, I'm prepared. Um, no, it's a, oh, look at that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, um, so for the first five years of making videos, I did everything myself. Which, if you talk to any YouTuber, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of writing and creativity and, you know, your shooting and your editing and everything. Um, and I've been blessed enough that over the last year I've been able to work with a close friend, Jimmy. Jimmy, where you at? Jimmy, right there. That's actually uh, my close friend, Jimmy, that I that helps me write my videos. And uh, he's a brilliant guy. And um, we we get our sources from so many different places now. It's you know I'll, I'll come up with an idea for say like a, the top ten cr uh, creepiest places on earth, and then you know Jimmy and I will look at basically you know what websites have the best ones, cherry pick which ones from those websites are the best, and then from there, do research based on those ideas. So if they say, like, Island of the Dolls, then we'll Google, like, Island of the Dolls, and, like, what is that? And it turns out it's a really creepy place where there's dolls hanging everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's, that's kind of how it works. So it's just really off the top of your head, you just come up with great ideas? Not, not always. It, it comes from a lot of different places. Like, it, like, it'll be something that'll just hit me during the day, or Jimmy will have an idea, or, like, you know, awesome guys like these guys down here. They'll, they'll like, email me or something, or tweet me, and they'll say, you know, uh, why don't you do it on Pokemon? And I'll, I'll do it on that, and I'll think, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> so how does that one on Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, yeah. Not yet. <laughs> so, so working on this with you, I, of course, reading over the drafts, I came across so many like weird, crazy, random things. I never would have ever learned otherwise. So, some of my favorites, I just got a few I want to point out. A single search on a single search on Google takes more computing power than it did to land Apollo 11 on the moon. Which is for terrifying. Which is terrifying. Plus <laughs> <laughs> four, four astronauts. There is a rock, paper, scissors robot that never loses. In Japan. So, yeah, there's scientists in Japan. You you got it. So you got to go more in depth with things. You can't just say. See, see, in Japan, there's a there's a robot that they developed where it has never lost against a human. So it has these uh, these high speed sensors that it can tell what you're gonna do before you do it, and then it beats you in rock paper scissors. It's pretty crazy. So cheeks. Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, I've seen a lot of friends and just like, <laughs> like we're just alone. So anyway, obviously we're all going to learn a lot of the book, but I want to know, I'm curious what you've learned. This was your first book. Uh, what about the experience that surprised you, or what was unexpected? Um, how much work had to go into it, actually? Uh, I mean, it's a book, so work had to go into it, but I, I didn't realize like how many people were going to be involved, and uh, one of the hardest things, actually, about the whole thing, or at least the most uh, grueling part of it, was recording the audiobook, <laughs> which sounds like it would be the easiest part of the whole thing, but uh, it was actually the hardest, because uh, I don't know if you guys have ever been in a booth recording for any length of time, but it's a lot of work. You're sitting there in front of a mic, and you're just nonstop talking for like eight hours a day over the course of like three days. And by the end of each day, it doesn't sound like a lot that you're just using your voice, but you know, you'll say a line, they'll say, ah, you flubbed that last word, can you redo it? And you say it again, and then by like, you know, two hours in, you're only 30 pages into a 200 page book, and you're just like, ah, I thought this would go faster. But yeah, how many people have ever sat to actually read a book out loud? Right. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really different thing. It's, it's, it's actually a lot of work, but um, you know, this book has been, we've been working on this for, Oh, man, well, what, like a year and a half, yeah. something like yeah, that. So, yeah, and uh, it's it's just really cool that it's like a thing now. I remember when I finally got the physical copy in my hand, I was really excited. I Snapchatted the crap out of it. <laughs> <laughs> we know. <laughs> so maybe this is a good way. Then um, you start the book with an introduction called Six Subtitles mm -hmm. that outlines really the beginning of your YouTube journey and. Um, I'm just good. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you're doing before that? How really how this came up? 
Uh, before YouTube, I was a hair model. <laughs> very, very successful. Uh, and then obviously things changed, so I had to go to YouTube. Um, no, I, I used to be an accountant, actually, uh, I, which is not exciting at all. Um, I spent five and a half years to get my Master of Accountancy degree, and then did it in public practice for two years. And, you know, the whole time I just, I wasn't really happy doing it, but I did it because, you know, you spend five and a half years in school, it's like, well, I can't just give that up, right? And then I got laid off one day, and it was at that moment when I realized that I was free to do anything that I wanted. And most people freak out when they get laid off, but I remember coming home and I was smiling. And it, like, it was that moment when I realized that I wanted this. It was, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that, anyone who knows me knows that my philosophy is, the universe has a way of pushing you in a direction that you were meant to go. And you know, oftentimes people, we're all, we're all kind of on a path, and people often don't want to make the hard choices to go into the thing that they really want to do because you know, they have to pay the bills, or they, you know, they have a family to support, or whatever. And I was lucky enough that when I got laid off, I was just supporting myself. So uh, I, you know, I talk about this in the book, but I was uh, unemployed for well over a year, and uh, but the whole time I was I was shooting videos, I was shooting weddings. Uh, I shot a wedding with JJ actually, uh, right there, my friend, uh, just to make ends meet. I was just trying to make ends meet and survive, but I was still doing YouTube the whole time on the weekends. And then uh, at the end of, jeez. End of 2014, I think it was, uh, my channel finally started to grow. And I don't know what happened. I never really had a viral video or anything. It just started to take off. And, and I started the year with 30,000 subscribers and ended 2014 with 3.5 million. Woo! 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 Yeah! I like telling people that because. That's so sick. It's crazy. Well, I like telling people that because it's like you can you can be at something for a really long time, and it, it might seem like it's going nowhere. It's going nowhere. But trust me when I say that things can happen for you overnight, and you just have to keep working at your craft and whatever it is that you love. And if you stay at it long enough, you get good enough at it, something will happen. So, something so during all that, did, did you ever think you'd write a book? Was that ever something you wanted? Mm -hmm. No, you know, I, in the last year, like, I've done a lot on YouTube and stuff, and, you know, over the last year, I've, I've really started to think about how I can expand my brand to, to do other things. And, like, you know, uh, I, wanted, I thought, about, okay, should I do movies, and should I do TV, and I am going to actually be in a movie. Uh, how many people know that I'm going to be in a movie next year? Woo! Woo! Really? What movie? Resident Evil! Wow, you guys are awesome. Cool. <laughs> Uh, awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to be in Resident Evil. Um, I'm going to be uh, a zombie, actually, in the next and final Resident Evil movie. Uh, Elite which is, zombie. Yeah. Which, yeah. Exactly. Which is really, uh, really exciting. So, um, but yeah, I, I, so I did that, and then uh, you guys approached me actually and said, "Have you ever thought about making a book?" And I thought, like, it, it just, I, I was shocked that I had not thought about it up until that point because. It seemed like it just immediately clicked. It was such a natural extension of my brand. I mean, I, I, I do facts in, in comedy and stuff like that for a living, so why not put it into a book? Because there's so many books on that topic. And then I realized, the more I talked to you guys and we talked about it and stuff, that we could make something really unique. Because my story is not one that is very common. Like, how many people go from accountant to YouTuber? Like, that's the strangest 180 that I think I've ever heard. So. Um, yeah, so uh, anyway, uh, I, I, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> you never dream of writing a book? No, the answer is no. Yeah, no, never. But I'm very, I'm very happy that it's, uh, that it's a reality and, and you know, I, I'm just very, very blessed and thankful for all of your support and my family and friends and, you know, all you guys that watch me all the time and everybody that, that bought the book, I really, really appreciate it, so thanks a lot.
Nintendo watches you. Well, I'll talk to you guys right after, and we'll all do a big meet and greet. I'm like you, I'm long enough. Oh, it's a chippy. Is that all the chippy? Yeah. Can you hear me? Cool. We'll do a few more questions, and then we'll get back to you guys, right? We've got lots of time, lots of time. Hold on. So, one thing I want to ask. Okay. You got room for me? Thank you. I'll check it out in just a minute. Thanks guys, I appreciate that. Uh, sorry, that was for a role that I had on uh, um, uh, Blues. What's that? Rookie Blues. Oh, rookie Blues, thank you. Jimmy's killing it. Um, yeah, rookie, I was on Rookie Blue and I was fub number one. <laughs> and I was on a couple different shows. And it was, it was, it was, it was an interesting experience. Uh, we ate peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. That's, that's what we had to eat. They're delicious. Um, but anyway, it was, it was a lot of work uh, for, you know, it, we got like hundred bucks for the day and the gas was 60 of that. You know, it, it, it was very hard, but I was just trying to make anything happen. And uh, so that was really the extent of my acting. I did a bit of acting classes, but for the most part, uh, the whole YouTube thing was just me shooting video after video after video after, and then end up being hundreds and hundreds of videos. And me just finding who I am on camera. Um, and it's just, it's a, it's a constant progression. It's just something of, you know, it, I, I would recommend that to anyone, to be honest with you. It's like, acting classes are one thing, but going in front of the camera and finding out what you look like, and you know, after a while you start to realize, like, if I move my face this way, I know exactly what it's gonna look like, and you start to get better at it. Yeah. I'll just shift it a little bit to sort of YouTube in general. The subject you probably like to talk about. I heard about the site, yes. Yep. <laughs> so it seems like there's a really tight knit community of YouTubers out there. So I'm curious, and people you work with, collaborate with, become friends with. And so I'm curious who some of your favorite YouTubers are right now. Like who is doing really new creative groundbreaking stuff in your mind? Yeah, um man. Well, I mean, I, I would be amiss if I didn't mention like my best friend Rachel. Where's Rachel? Woo, she's <laughs> right here. So she she's doing like really, really great stuff. She she's connected to everybody, so she's got all kinds of cool celebrities that she has on her channel and stuff, so she's doing good things. I'm sorry, can um, you do that again? I just need to get my phone. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, yeah uh, I, mean, I, watch, I watch my Don't best worry, friend, I got uh, Rob Dyke. Uh, do you guys know Rob Dyke? Rob Dyke. Twins. I don't know if you guys know the Hodge twins. Uh, they're hilarious. Uh, of course, uh, you know, I, I occasionally watch my friend Superwoman shows. They do great. She puts out great skits and things like that. Yeah, and just, you know, there's so much, there's so much talent on YouTube. And there's so many people doing so many good, positive things. Those are the creators that I like to focus on uh, exclusively on YouTube. So, um... It's not always positive though. So another YouTuber, uh, Pretty Buy, recently released a video where he sort of addressed some of the negative stuff that you see online. And I thought it was a really great video. He put a really great positive spin on the I'm curious, um, do you ever notice any negativity online directed at you? And oh, there's I always that you know, that, Yeah, you, there's no one on earth that could say that they've never got a negative comment online. Um, you know, the way that I look at negative comments online is, to be honest with you, from my experience, any time I've ever reached out to somebody that has left a negative comment, like tweeted me something or left a Facebook message, whatever, I it, you would be shocked at how many times I've reached out to them and said like, oh, hey, sorry, but why do you feel that way? And they just immediately like, they say, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I never thought you'd actually see this or respond, like, uh, I'm actually a huge fan, I'm just having a really bad day. And, and that's the way I approach going online is that, I know that honestly probably 90% of the people, when they say something negative online, it's, it's probably because they're just having a bad day, or their parents just divorced, or they lost their job. Like, people go through a lot of things, and for some people, it's just their way of having an outlet, and, and I understand that. And you know, there's always that small percentage of people that are just hating everything, and they just, just want to be at everything. But 
Um, the vast, vast majority of, of people that watch my videos are so loving and supportive. And like, like, look at all the people here. Like, you guys are awesome. And there's such a good energy here. And, you know, <laughs> So I actually did it two years in a row. Uh, the first year, I did it with FoosyTube. Obviously, you guys know FoosyTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so the first year, I did it with him and my friend Lisa. And then, so we co-hosted the YouTube live stream. And then last year, I co-hosted with ASAP Science. Are they reaching Greg? Are you guys here? No, but uh, Mr. Greg are great. They have ASAP Science. They're also in Toronto. Uh, they, I co-hosted it with them. And then this year, I actually found out, I actually just had a phone call that we were doing it again. And yeah, it's, it's really exciting. If you guys don't know Global Citizen, this will be the third year I'm working with them. They have some really, really ambitious goals. They Basically what they want to do is by gathering the top celebrities in the world and the top policymakers, their goal is to create enough awareness and change with these policymakers that they want to eliminate global poverty by the year 2030 which is an extremely ambitious goal, because that's like 14 years away. When you think of global poverty, it's a really big undertaking. Um, but it's, it's such an incredible thing, and I'm so very proud to be a part of it. Uh, it, it, came, it all came about because I think they just emailed me. I think they just said, we saw your YouTube videos, and we'd like you, we think you're nice, and we'd like you to come out. And, and um, I met so many, I've met so many people through that. One of the coolest stories, actually, uh, is I actually, the second time I hosted it, I went out on stage in front of 300,000 people on, uh, I think it's called The Great Lawn in New York City. Is it called The Great Lawn? I always forget. But it's that massive uh, lawn under um, the Jeff, good lord, I'm not on today. The Jefferson Memorial, whatever that big obelisk is. Someone help me out. Central Park? What's it? Central Park? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, whatever. It was at a place for the thing. And um, anyway, it was really incredible because I walked out there, but uh, the host of the show was sold out of Ryan and Will I Am. So I'm on stage with Will I Am talking to Will I Am, and like from Black Eyed Peas, Will I Am. And I'm like, I'm like okay, just play cool. It's just a regular guy, but I'm like, but he's not. Like, he's very but whatever. Um, and he was just a really nice guy, and I remember being terrified because they gave me my script as to what they wanted me to read 10 minutes before I went out on stage. Now, I can't memorize a paragraph in 10 minutes, especially when I'm under a lot of pressure. I used a teleprompter at home. So like, I, so I remember, but I remember him saying like, don't screw up, don't screw up. He used more colorful language than that. But he said, don't screw up, don't screw up. And uh, they said, no, no, you're gonna do fine. And he hit me on the back and then I went, Okay, and I walked out, and then there was a teleprompter there. They didn't tell me there was a teleprompter. <laughs> I freaked out for nothing, and, but it, it went really well, and I introduced Richard Branson. And anyway, uh, it's just that was one example of uh, working with those guys, and they're just fantastic. You see a potential for YouTube and other social media to to expand on how traditional news and events are covered. Uh, yeah. Well, you already see a lot of live streaming. I mean. YouTube live streams a lot of major events. Like I think they did the royal wedding, and I think they I think they might be doing the Olympics. I'm not sure, but they they're doing a lot of live streaming now. And uh, you know, Twitter has live streaming, and you you know, news is breaking on Twitter. You find out about things on Twitter before you pretty much hear about anywhere else now. I remember when Michael Jackson died, I heard about it on Twitter. Um, so yeah, I think that you know, social media is changing the landscape of, of media in general, not just. Uh, not just news reporting, but it's it's a really cool time to be alive. What time? So uh, back to your YouTube channel. Just for a so in the past year, I think in just the past year, you increased the number of videos you do to three a week. Just recently, yeah. Just recently. Mm -hmm. Started a video gaming channel. Yeah. Still continue with the blog channel. And and you wrote this book. <laughs> so my question is really simple. 
How do you see I don't. It? You don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I forgot what it means about it was a long time ago. Um, you know, I being a YouTuber is uh, it's a lot of work. Like people, I, I think that perception is changing of YouTubers. I think that there was once a time when people perceived us as like all you do is all you do is upload a video and make money from that, but. You know, it's, it's a lot of work. And like I said, for the first five years, I did everything myself. And it was an incredible amount of work. And it's, it gets you down sometimes. Because you, for me, I, uh, I'm still in the house a lot. Like even back then, like I got Jimmy's help and Brock's help. Uh, but I'm still in the house a lot. And I would like to be out more, but I'm just, I'm a very ambitious person. I just, the way that I look at it is I've been given a gift and I've been given all of these lovely people that actually want to see my stuff. And like, I don't take that lightly. It's like, I remember being an accountant and what I used to call being plugged in the matrix. Like I was literally like, like Neo, like all day, like, like a zombie. That's not good yet. Yeah. Uh, like, like a zombie, like Neo, like, you know, plugging away and making money for someone else. And, now that I have this opportunity and I'm, and I'm making more money than I ever did as an accountant, I'm, 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 I'm able to give back in ways that I ever were able to back then and, and I'm meeting people and I'm traveling, it's like I don't take that lightly at all and I would, I would never want to just rest on the fact that I have X number of subscribers. It's, it's, it's never enough for me, which is both my gift and my curse because it's, it's like I'm never quite satisfied, but at the same time it's that, it's that passion, that fire that keeps me always wanting to do more and give back and create things. Are these really long answers? I feel like these are like random. <laughs> are they okay? Are they okay? Alright, alright, cool. I have just one more. It's the shortest question, but it might be the toughest to answer. What is next for you? Oh, oh, I, I get that question a lot, actually. Uh, you heard about the film. It's cool. Yeah, I'm really excited for that to come out. Uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. South Africa was really cool. I met Neil Djokovic and stuff, but anyway, I think I'll talk about that. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I'm, all, I'm always just looking. I don't make a plan. I, I realized a long time ago that plans don't work in today's world. They really don't. Um, you know, when I was an accountant, I, if I made a, a five-year plan, it would have been useless in you know, a matter of months. So. Um, I realized that I, my life, I've realized over the last year that my life can change overnight. And anybody's life can change overnight, and that's the world we live in. And that's why I don't make plans, I just roll with things, and I just go with what's presented to me, and if I have something I want to do, I go for it now, because tomorrow isn't promised today, and you're not necessarily going to have the opportunity you have today, tomorrow. So always do things now, never hesitate, and just get the most out of life you can. For making it on YouTube, um, the only thing that is consistent across all the people that I've ever met is that they truly have a passion for what they're doing. And I don't know how many subscribers you have, but I can tell that many. How many? Okay, no, I'm sorry. I have like 30 tops. Okay, that's okay. Well, hey, you know what? I had 30 at one point. Um, but what it comes down to is just keep making videos. And if you love doing it, just do it because you like doing it. Don't, don't do it because you want to be famous, you want to make money, or anything like that. Just do it. Do it for you. Um, and that would be, that would be my Yes. Good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, first off, I would like to just say I am happy to uh, see you again after so long. Yeah, I've seen you much times. And uh, I was, um, I, I uh, later, like, I'll give you the page for my YouTube channel. Like, oh, yeah. I don't know. Okay, yes, cool. Uh, um, I would like you to subscribe, but my question <laughs> is, um, who, like, if I had, if you had to choose out of like one friend, like, um, actually, what I want to say is, 
we did a switcheroo. Mm -hmm. it, I, I used to live here, as you may know. Yeah, you went to St. Catharines. Yes, yep. and uh, how does it feel to know that I, uh, by the way, I represent St. Catharines. Yes, so <laughs> How's it feel doing the switcheroo? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I miss you every day. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I, I, I so love- So do I, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, moving, moving here was the best decision I ever made. Um, it was, <laughs> I, I, I met my best friend, Rachel, who's been like one of the closest people in my life. <laughs> close friends of mine. And, um, you know, when I was in St. Catharines, I, I would not have met any of these people. And through moving here, my life has been enriched exponentially. And uh, I've been able to do more things and uh, meet really amazing people. And this is a really amazing city. And there's, it's so multicultural. And just everything about it is is it's so, so Canada, like this, this. By the way, the same goes for me because um, I'll, when we uh, do the, um, the book signing, I will tell you uh, sure. what I wanted to tell you about my music. All right, I'll so definitely check it out. See you, uh, I'll tell you more about my music. Absolutely. Later. I'll check it out on everybody's channel. Whoever, if you guys have like write it down or have a card or something, I'll check it out. You have my channels. <laughs> In your opinion, what is the funniest video you make? Uh -huh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my daughter. <laughs> this girl's smart. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna okay, I'll, this is, I'll say it in two parts. There's two videos. One of my favorite videos I ever made on my own was a video called How to Be Popular. It was back when I used to live in St. Catharines and I did comedy sketches. And it was back when I did Eugene, the whole hello. That thing. So, yeah, that, that was one of my favorite ones that I've ever made on my own. I think one of the funniest ones that still makes me laugh and a lot of people laugh was actually shot with Jimmy in the back there. Uh, I don't know if you, how many of you guys have seen the Urban Dictionary quiz. Uh, yeah, there's two of them on my channel. And they're older videos now. They're like three years old and four years old. They're pretty old now. But uh, it was just me and him on a couch just riffing, and I would quiz him on uh, Urban Dictionary definitions. And he would just give the funniest answers. And that, it still makes me laugh when I see that. Alright, um, before I start, I want to say thanks for the laughs, right? Thanks. Um, what, what do you think is your favorite part of doing YouTube? Oh, this, to be honest with you, uh, yeah, uh, when I like, I used to be a class clown in, in high school, um, and then and then somewhere along the line, I became an adult, and that really sucks. Um, it sucks because like you you're told like not to be goofy and not to not to be not to keep that. Ch somewhere along the line, when you grow up, you kind of lose that that childish playfulness. And and uh, when I started doing YouTube again, I found I, doing YouTube, I found that again, and I, it just made me a much happier person. Um, and, uh, and honestly, just like seeing the people that support me, that's my favorite thing. Like going to VidCon or coming here or playlists and seeing, actually seeing the people that are commenting on the videos, the real people, that's, that's my favorite thing for sure. Nice answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you made it. Well, I. In the last year, uh, Rob Dyke and Rachel, for sure. Um, just there's been a lot of ups and downs, and through it all, they've been there and they've seen like all the great stuff that's happened and uh, working with Global Citizen, and uh, you know they've been with me uh, when I when I've been at like a really cool events, and I'm gonna see Rob this Friday at CraveCon in Texas. Well, it's and, yeah, it's great. Uh, so, yeah, um, and, and you know, like my family and friends, and uh, it just everyone, everyone that I keep around me is very supportive, and I think I think that's really important, not just in entertainment, but in life. It's important to keep good people around you that that support you and have good energy, because life is too short for anything. Else. <laughs>
up more than me. Um, lately, I haven't been getting as many subscribers as I normally do, so I was wondering, what can I do to um, move forward with this one? Me neither, bro. We're in the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, collaborate. <laughs> okay, so uh, don't. Th this is going to be really hard to do, but I promise if you do it, it will be easier to get to that point that you want to be at. Stop looking at the numbers. And that is the hardest thing because trust me, like everybody checks the numbers, even I check the numbers, but um, if you do it, and this is something like I keep saying all the time, and it sounds kind of cliche, but if you do it for you, and you make videos for you, and you make videos and you're proud of them, and you show them to your friends and family, and you do it for that reason, that, that will carry you far and far enough that you'll get to that point of 100,000 subscribers and then a million or whatever your goal is. It, it takes time, but you, you, it'll be easier to get to that point if you're not focused on the numbers and you're focused on the creativity instead. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Last, and we use Adobe Premiere Pro for videos and stuff. But like, I was wondering what type of like, video, um, either like, um, websites and stuff can you use for your editing? Yeah, uh, I I use Vegas Pro actually, um, and my so I work with uh, my editor Brock, who edits the majority of the video, and then I sometimes put some finishing touches on it, things like that, and then I provide the guidance. But for everything else, like my gaming videos, uh, my vlogs, whenever I make them, uh, it's <laughs> I use Vegas Pro. It only not because it's superior, just because when I started YouTube, that was the thing that popped up when I googled. Video editing program. <laughs> so uh, it, it's not bad. Uh, I think the Blair Witch Project was edited on it, but like Premiere is still the Premiere uh, application, I'd say. Get help. <laughs> Get help. Absolutely. Like this, nobody that I have, and my understanding is nobody writes, sits down and writes a whole book on their own unless you're like J.K. Rowling. Um, and that you can afford to sit down for 10 hours a day for a year and do it. Um, I was lucky enough that I had my good friend Jake Green, whose name is on the cover of the book, was able to help take all of the information that I got. And all of uh, everything I wrote down, my whole life story, and because I don't know how to write a book, like I don't know how the process of that goes. So what he did was he took all the the, the hundreds of pages of just randomness and organized it into the chapters that you see. And if you know how to do that, then go for it. But uh, there, what the reason I'm saying that is because there's there's intricacies along the way that you might not have. Um, experience with and other people are experts at and uh, and just like with any great work you get help even if it's just a little bit so I uh, don't be afraid to get help from someone yeah. 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 Wait, does here also use Vegas Pro? Maybe. <laughs> what would your funnest video of Rob's egg? Uh, oh, I love that kid. I don't know, I have to think about that one. Let me think about that one, I gotta think about that. There's a question at the back uh, What's up, man? Hey, man, what's up? Uh, I actually do two things. First, let me just grab this for a Snapchat for the fact. What's up? Snapchat. Woo! Got 10 seconds. My honest question is, um, will you be seeing any collabs with the YouTubers uh, in the near future? Yeah, um, I haven't really collabed with anyone for a long time, but um, starting September, I want to do more, I want to go back kind of more to how I used to make videos, kind of more, more, uh, I don't know how to say it, more, I don't know how to word it. You'll notice it, I think you'll notice a difference in September. I'm going to be doing more, I'm, I'm going to be doing just top tens and 50 amazing facts until I can figure out how to kind of retool facts and five and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, um, definitely, definitely collabs are going to be coming up. I just have to figure out how to fit them in to my channel. Did you collab with your boy show? 
Rob, yeah, Rob. Yeah, I was about to ask that. Like, would there be anybody who can name some school right now, or is it just like, oh, a bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of people uh, that I know on YouTube that are friends of mine that. Like, I would like to clock with again that I have in the past. Uh, new ones, um, I don't know if I'm supposed to say it or not. <laughs> let, let's see this, there's, yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what I'll say is uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a big prankster, that's a friend of mine, that, that, is, uh, that I'm gonna be doing something with uh, this month, which will be cool, on his channel, so that'll be fun. I, can't, I don't want to give it away because I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it. So guys, we're going to do one more question. Sure. And then we'll go back. We have time after too, guys. There's no rush, so we got, we got time after. Hey. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Megan, and I'm starting a YouTube channel. I don't have many subscribers. I'm still in the one digit. But I was hoping, it's been a dream of mine since, grade nine to do a collab video with you okay on uh, facts and five of uh, self-harm and depression okay sure yeah absolutely i mean that I'm, I'm willing to do all kinds of different topics and that's definitely one that you know people like mental health is super super important um, and you see more and more of it popping up in, on billboards, and, and it's, it's, it's something that I've actually, just this year, become much more involved with. In fact, in October, I'm going to be going to Montreal to work with, uh, I haven't even told anyone this, so you guys are the first to I'm going to uh, October to work with Howie Mandel uh, on his um, uh, mental health event. Uh, that he puts on. I forget the name of it, but yeah, it, it's it's really cool, and I'm proud to be a part of it because uh, it's something that we need to talk definitely more about. So yeah, I'd be happy to. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure he mentioned this. I, okay. I messaged you on Snapchat before this event uh, an entire uh, thank you letter for all that you've done for me. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Did I open it? Uh, no. <laughs> no? Okay. So I, the reason I ask that is because I get hundreds of snaps a day, and the way that Snapchat works when you get that many is they actually don't deliver them all. So I get that all the time where people say, you didn't open it, it's like, I never got it. So what I'm going to do is, like, when we have some time after, tell me your username, and then I can search it, and then I'll, I'll definitely read it. Cool. Oh, and this is what she drew. Whoa. <laughs> 